to this session on cryptography and cryptographic techniques. Uh, I will be discussing various uh, aspects, definitions, and concepts that constitute uh, cryptography and encryption. Um, the first one that needs to be really thought about is uh, steganography. Um, it is a secrecy technique where uh, the existence of an actual message is hidden. The word is derived from the Greek word stegnos uh, and uh, graphene. Uh, stegnos means covered and graphene means right. Stegnography is an ancient, really ancient technique that uh, goes back to thousands of years um, and is as primitive as the secrecy and secret communication systems. Um, in the early part of the first century, uh, Pliny and Elder describe how milk from a certain plant could be used as an invisible link. Uh, another, trick, uh, another technique that uh, is ancient in Greece is involved in shaving a messenger's head and then they used to write a message on the scalp and waited for the hair to grow um, uh, before sending this messenger to the requisite destination. Uh, this technique primarily achieves uh, uh, security through obscurity uh, and its basic weakness though is that the message is discovered and the secret communication is revealed. Um, so that's the historic background to steganography. Another concept that needs to be thought about is cryptography. Uh, cryptography is a technique that is used to hide the meaning of a message and it is also derived from the Greek word uh, kryptos, which means hidden. Uh, this is different from steganographic techniques um, in that one is not hiding the actual message, only the meaning of the message. Uh, so if a message were to fall in the hands of the wrong person, cryptography uh, should ensure that the message could not be read as opposed to uh, the steganographic techniques where uh, you are essentially, uh, once the shaven head is discovered, then you know what the message is. Um, so um, uh, typically the sender and the receiver, uh, they generally agree upon a message scrambling protocol. Uh, before the message is actually sent and they agree on the methods for encryption and decryption of messages. So cryptography is further divided into two implementation techniques um, and these are uh, transposition and substitution. Um, it is possible to combine cryptography and steganography together to achieve a high level of security. Combining these two primitives uh, should both hide the meaning of the message as well as the concealment of the physical message. If the message is uh, intercepted, it can be blocked but not read. Um, these techniques were very popular during World War II. Uh, the Germans would scramble the messages and then shrink the text down to a tiny dot, uh, uh, which was generally inserted uh, as a period uh, and some unsuspecting letter or text for uh, secret communication. Transposition uh, is another technique which is very interesting. It's a crypt cryptographic technique which uh, really involves uh, rearranging uh, the message uh, uh, which in turn provides secrecy. Now, in order to understand um, transposition, think of any word, let's say dog, and uh, also think in terms of how many different ways in which dog DOG could be rearranged, it could be DOG, it could be DGO, or it could be ODG, it could be DGO, you know, and so on and so forth. Um, this anagram is a very simple example of transposition. The position of letters all uh, retain their identities but uh, change their original positions. As you increase the size of the message to over 40 letters or uh, the number of uh, permutations grows exponentially and hence it becomes very difficult to decrypt such communication. Typically in these cases, the sender and the receiver agree upon a technique to encode. Uh, it is never uh, random encoding, um, but the technique is also uh, agreed upon for decoding such transpositions. One of the first cryptographic uh, devices using transposition goes back to the fifth century um, it, it's commonly referred to as the uh, Spartan scattle. Um, the scattle worked uh, like, a, uh, think of a fabric being wrapped around a staff and a message is written on the cloth. Once we undo the fabric, uh, unwound the fabric, the, the cloth appears to have many meaningless uh, scramble of letters. The sender then receives uh, not only uh, the matching sized staff, but also the um, 
the piece of cloth and then they can wrap it up again and then read the message. There's some very interesting uses of um, transposition. There's one particular kind of transposition um, which is commonly referred to as rail fence transposition. Uh, in this technique, uh, a message is written um, on uh, two or more lines and uh, each consecutive letter of the message uh, is written to the next consecutive line uh, and the text of the second and third lines are then appended to the first line to create uh, the scrambled message. Uh, as you can see in this graphic, um, we're using a very simple example of Hello World um, and uh, uh, the Hello World, which is the original message, appears in the first line uh, just for demo purposes. And then line one um, of the transposition is H L O W R D, and the words E L O L. Uh, are written on the second line. So our uh, transposed message becomes H-L-O-W-R-D-E-L-O-L. -E Substitution is another technique that is used uh, uh, in cryptography and this is a case where each letter of the plain text message is then replaced by a different letter. Um, each letter retains its original position in the message text but the identity of the letter is changed um, and this type of technique is known to have been used by Julius Caesar in the Gaelic Wars. Um, so again in this particular graphic you will see a simple substitution cipher. Uh, we're using something really really simple here A, B, C, D, E which is the plain text alphabet and, and in the second line you see uh, D, C, E, G, H which is a cipher alphabet. So if one were to think of a uh, some very simple word like B A D bad, um, then a simple encrypted message would be C D G in this particular case. So as you will see that the letter C is below B and D is below A. So B A D becomes C D and uh, G, which is uh, the D is the G is under the D. So it becomes a CDG in that sense. You know, so it's a simple substitution technique, uh, but one needs to know what the coding method was uh, in the first instance. So as time has gone by, um, the cryptographic techniques have uh, obviously increased in sophistication. Um, may it be uh, the Wigner's uh, cipher or uh, the one-time pads uh, or the Enigma cipher. Uh, the story of Enigma is actually very interesting. Uh, it was uh, Germany's main cryptographic technology during World War II. Uh, Germany always wanted to create an unbreakable cipher and the Enigma machine was what they ended up creating. Uh, it consisted of uh, just a basic keyboard, a display that would reveal the cipher, text letter and a scrambling mechanism uh, such that each plain text letter entered as input via the keyboard was uh, transcribed to the corresponding cipher text. Uh, so uh, think of a typewriter um, which is producing a kind of a, a cipher text. Uh, the machine was modular in design and multiple scrambling disks uh, were employed uh, so that uh, you, you know there were not attempts at frequency analysis of these scrambling disks. Um, and uh, their particular positioning inside the Enigma emulated many different cipher alphabets. So, uh, so this was a machine that was uh, uh, was very popular during that uh, time. But um, breaking Enigma was crucial to ending World War II, and it was eventually broken uh, due in large part because the work of Marian Rejewski, uh, who was a Polish statistician, mathematician, and also a code breaker. Um, so he transformed all his research to English and um, and the French weeks before Germany invaded Poland and eventually Alan Turing and the code breakers at Bletchley uh, who used Rejewski's work to build uh, Bombas which was an electromechanical uh, machine that was designed specifically to break, break Enigma. So hence all the German messages could be read. So there's some very interesting stories uh, that go with uh, cryptography um, over the years. Uh, but clearly today uh, we see more asymmetric kind of cryptographic techniques, um, uh, particularly through the work of uh, Revis, Shamir and Edelman at Harvard and hence the commonly referred to as the RSA uh, asymmetric cryptographic technique. Um, so which is, um, uh, which is uh, very popular today and, and uh, worth a read.